start off um, with the Daily Guide this morning, <coughs> where we're told that Bormia announced the Beds and Debt Registry decentralization. Air tremors that shook Accra, and uh, we've been asking where the plan is. We're told that the plan that the president asked for to be developed last February is ready. It's waiting for cabinet to go through it, send it to parliament, and hopefully we'll get to pass it uh, on. The KNUST gets its first female vice chancellor. The UPS is getting its first female registrar as well. Our ladies are leading the charge. No old voter ID. Supreme Court rules out tricky NDC. BNFT, communication responsible leadership, uh, the way to go, according to the experts in, in managing workers' anxiety. KNUST appoints first female vice chancellor. And anxiety in SME sector still high due to COVID-19, according to GNT. Uh, GNCCICO. Uh, the Daily Graphic this morning, MPP to acclaim Akufuado uh, flag bearer tomorrow, one week apart when we had uh, some acclamations and some elections going on. Uh, graphic prioritizes national interest according to the Governor of the Bank of Ghana. And Supreme Court affirms CI 126. Registration starts on Tuesday without old voter ID, birth certificate, which was indeed uh, some of the reliefs that the NDC had sought in court. The Supreme Court disagreed with them on that score. Wednesday's air tremor geological survey is cautioning that there are fault lines and we must all be very, very careful uh, while we are out there. And also the Finder newspaper this morning reports that uh, raw over existing voter ID cards, birth certificate, NDC has lost or loses case. Supreme Court clears EC to compile new register. Beds and debt NIA databases to be integrated to enhance identification of citizens. And on the front page, you find that the Electoral Commission has also put together a guideline following that um, ruling by the Supreme Court on how they intend to proceed with the registration of to, to compile a new voter register. COVID-19, Ashanti records 205 new cases in 24 hours with three people uh, joining the ancestors on the silent harbor. The Ghanaian Times this morning also says that go ahead with new voters register without old voters ID. Supreme Court uh, rules. It comes with a photograph of the Chief Justice, Justice Enine Boa. Police tax to ensure uh, forced wearing of masks in Accra. Cabinet approves bill to decentralize bed debt registration. And IGP confers with political party representatives. Earthquake imminent uh, in Accra, likely to follow Wednesday's tremor. And we're told that we are sitting literally on a time bomb, if you like. And the, the Daily Dispatch says the NDC versus EC, the full judgment is in them. So all the ambiguity, thankfully we have the head of the NDC's legal team here. So we'll get the understanding of it as well. The air tremors in Accra, a warning of a major quake. Let me quickly say thank you to Sonar Fashions in Tamale for my beautiful outfit this morning. 024-659-0162. That's 024-659-0162 or 059-649-9961. That's 059-649-6. Uh, 9961. So now fascists is in Tamale, but they deliver all across Ghana. Richard Ahiagba is the executive director of the Dankwa Institute, their think tank, but uh, he has a soft spot also for the NPP. Proud to that position, he had been uh, deputy national communications director of the NPP. And uh, lawyer Abraham Amalba is a leader of the NDC's legal uh, team. He's also a member of the communication team. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. How are you doing? Friday. Um, Quite Very well, mm. quite well. Mm. But it was a sad day for our democracy yesterday. A very wicked uh, judgment was delivered to deny majority of Ghanaians the right to register. And I think that that decision is a travesty of justice. Um, one would have thought that the judgment mm. would have taken into consideration mm. the knowledge of our rural areas. You're talking about passport in my village. A passport, when you go to some rural areas, you talk about a passport, you ask you, is it our Susu card you are talking of? Or is it the passport picture we snapped? And you are asking people to go to the region center with a passport in my village. Okay, we'll get to, to the details, but you, you yeah? obviously are disappointed. But uh, when you go to court, you either win or lose. And, uh... But you can express your disagreement. Right. And yesterday, our flag bearer expressed the disagreement of the party and the disappointment of the party 
are the ruler. Okay, Richard, are you doing? Are you disappointed too? <sighs> no. Uh, elated. <laughs> no, I'm not elated. I knew the facts were very clear. Mm. Uh, what the NDC was up against and what they had cooked mm. to visit on Ghanaians. When he's talking about disappointed and wicked, mm. 47 or 48 percent of Ghanaians in 2012, mm -hmm. okay, who voted for a president, and we know that's the official number mm. we're, we're talking. <laughs> but then the Supreme Court gave a verdict. There was a party, there was a presidential candidate mm. to date who says he disagreed with the ruling, but in the interest of this country, he'll go along with it. So what is he telling me? That wicked and all these things he's saying. It is a question of whether or not you believe in the rule of law or you don't. Okay. The facts were clear. Mm. What uh, my senior brother Maliba is doing here is some gymnastics to throw dust out there as if something has happened that he didn't know was going to happen because the facts were clear before they went to court. Okay. Now, what is also clear to us here is that we started a campaign sometime last week and seeking to ask why trotros and taxis are observing social distancing uh, on board, and yet the big buses from the STCs to the VVIPs to the OAs to the Ayalolos to the Metro Mass are not practicing social distancing on board. Yet, when you get to their bus terminals, they ask you to wash your hands, put on your mask, and uh, socially distance before you buy your ticket. But when you get on the bus, nothing happens. So we put that question out there. Uh, even though we didn't get immediate answers, we've been assured by the Minister for Information yesterday, after we put a question out there, that he will engage the police and the, M the MTTD and the Minister responsible for transport. Take a, li a quick listen to that. When we return, we'll talk EC issues. We have been going around and realized that social distancing in the transport vehicles, taxis and all that are quite accurate. But the VVIPs, the Metro Mass Transport, the Ayalulus and Co, do not observe the social distancing protocols. Are they exempted from it? Well, no, we are not aware of any exemptions to uh, VVIP uh, or any such categories. Uh, the rules as have been outlined are supposed to apply to uh, all. We will do well to engage the minister responsible for transport so that they funnel it through the value chain and ensure. At the same time, we will also um, draw the attention of the um, uh, police uh, MTTU so that they ensure that uh, enforcement and compliance takes place there. That was the Minister for Information yesterday at the press briefing. So we are happy that at least our campaign is getting some attention. The fact that consultations will be done. Today is Friday. We hope that very, very soon we'll get some good answers and that strict compliance and enforcement will happen. So good morning to you, Mr. President. Good morning to you, Mr. Transport Minister, Honorable Isiama. Good morning to you, Kojo. I trust you are doing very, very well. We're looking forward to that consultation. And I, the Director General of the MTTD as well. We hope that we all get to protect ourselves because as we've seen, the numbers are shooting up. We may attribute it to massive testing and all of that, but we can't also write away the local transmission of the virus that's going on. So I want and I plead that we protect ourselves. Let's ensure that what's good for the trotters and the taxis are equally good for the buses. Rich, I don't know if you have a bite on this one. No, I think uh, it's in order. Uh, we're all concerned. The uh, president has been very uh, consistent on the matter that we need to take our health uh, seriously and do all we can as good citizens to fight the spread of COVID-19. So I think it's a call in the right direction. Council. Mm. I don't want to dissipate my energy on this. They are not managing the situation well. I'm ready for the next topic. They are not, they are not managing well. They are not managing the situation well. They are poorly managing. That's why we have all these numbers and people are dying. So I don't want to dissipate my energies mm. on this. Yesterday, the Supreme Court ruled, uh, and you were not happy, obviously, in your initial comments, but your general secretary, right after the ruling, was out there. You were all standing behind him. He is not a lawyer, and he was the one doing the interpretation. Subsequently, we got to find out that if you want, for the want of a better expression, he misled the whole country by making us believe that the Supreme Court had ruled that the old or the existing ID cards would be admitted in the compilation of a new register. What exactly happened in court? Uh, let me say good morning to our viewers. Um, you see, 
I don't know whether you read uh, H. Christy Prempe's uh, article on uh, judges should uh, uh, write their judgments in plain English, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether you saw it. Right, I did. Yesterday, mm. when the ruling or the judgments was being delivered, mm -hmm. it created a lot of confusion in the minds of all of us who were there, even we the lawyers. If your reporter is there, he will attest to what I'm saying. He did. In fact, yesterday when we there broke, was total confusion when we broke the news here, he we called him and he says that both the lawyers and the journalists were confused. In fact, the attorney, deputy attorney general, rose up to ask for clarification of some of mm. the judgment or the rulings that were given, and the chief justice said, "No, no, no. Uh, they can get a copy from the registry." So there was total confusion. Now, to come to Asid and Ketia. Mm. You know, two cases were merged. Com uh, they called them um, consolidated. Mm. And so, in, in reading the ruling, I don't know that was handwritten, mm. you had a chief justice saying that one of the reliefs of the other other, other suit, not the NDC okay. suit. Mm. The, the, the individual who had... Who went to court. Far, okay. Mm. So you heard him say that Rule 4 mm -hmm. has Relief. been dismissed. Relief 4. The, mm -hmm. yeah. the individual. Mm -hmm. Right. Rule 4 has been dismissed okay. because it has been granted in the NDC case. That's a consequential order, is it not? Oh, no. Consequential mm. is... You that, say that this and later. then you say yeah. that mm. in the circumstances you have to do this. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. But this is just a ruling. So mm. it has been dismissed because it has been granted in the NDC one. So we have to go to check what relief they had which was dismissed. Mm. And their relief was to include the voter ID card okay. and birth certificate. Because they went to they added birth certificate into their matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were just looking for voter ID, voter ID card, card. The existing card. So. so when we read it and saw that it was about voter ID card mm. and that has been granted in the NDC, then we said, oh, that's who they. That's what we are looking for. Okay. If all the others even are dismissed, okay. if this one is granted, that's all. That's it. That's it. And so you heard the general secretary yesterday say that it is the most uh, crucial mm. relief we are looking for right. and we thank the court for granting it. Mm. So that explains how come our general secretary made that statement. Mm -hmm. But subsequently, when we had the certified true copy, which I have in my hands, mm. we realized that that relief mm -hmm. seeking for the use of the current voter ID card mm -hmm. was also dismissed. So the confusion came from the way the judgment was delivered mm -hmm. and how it created confusion in the court and how each of us understood the... Uh, By your individual interpretation. The interpretation. And so it wasn't as if the general secretary went out there to deliberately misinform. And I've given you the background to why he reached that decision. Okay. Because they said they had dismissed a relief mm -hmm. in the second case because it has been granted in the NDC. Okay. So to be able to know what was granted in the NDC, you, you to go, go to, to the, 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 okay. those people's thing. And when we read it, it was about the voter ID card. Mm. And so he then made that statement. So it was not a deliberate attempt mm. to go out there and misinform. Well, but what does that mean? That it was because it's been granted to you, then it, it would have to... I don't get it. I'm confused at this point still. You see, we have... Sim that's why it was consolidated. There were similar reliefs. Right. Okay. So you consolidate because they, uh, you consolidate cases because they emanate from the same facts, okay. and probably you are seeking the relief from the same person, one particular person, right. and you saw Which that. Which is the electoral commission. Electoral commission, okay. and the facts are the same, so normally they will consolidate. Mm. So the consolidation was right; it was okay, and so in giving judgment, you mm. need to deal with both reliefs mm. in the two suits. So when he said that, the one of the reliefs of the the, of, private, the private person's case mm -hmm. has been dismissed because it has been granted in the NDC. Mm -hmm. It gave us the impression okay. because we had gone to read mm -hmm. what was dismissed and we saw that what was dismissed was about the voter ID card. Mm -hmm. But to say that 
it was granted to the NDC, then we said, oh, oh, in that case, if you've dismissed it because uh, it is similar to our mm. case and it has been granted in our case, so you have dismissed this, fine. So did, that means did you that misunderstand the, the Supreme Court by that, that announcement? Would you say that you, the NDC misunderstood the Supreme Court's ruling? Uh, no, no. And I told you how the confusion came out. It's not only the NDC. Uh, the EC judge, uh, lawyers okay. were also confused. Okay. The Attorney General was also confused. And I indicated to you that the Attorney General even got up mm. to seek for a clarification. clarification. And even that one, he was told that, no, wait. Your, if the judgment is ready, okay. you can... Your, your, your party flag bearer is not happy. He said he's disappointed and he thinks that uh, whatever has been done by the Supreme Court is not in the right order. Um, and, and all of that. Why is he crying wolf when the matter has been settled? You went to court, you argued your case out, the judges looked at it and they, they made a decision. Why is he crying wolf? It is not always that the court is right. Look, let me give you an example. Far back as 1976 or so, I don't know, I've forgotten the year, mm. the Yendi Skin Affair was decided by the Supreme Court. But what happened? Nothing. It had to take an intervention by a dialogue mm. of eminent chiefs to be able to settle the matter. So it's not always that the Supreme Court is right. What is our argument? We are saying that let people with current voter ID card mm. use it as a breeder document. And see, we are not saying that let people use people who are, use, who are holding NDC cards. Mm. We are saying Ghanaians who are holding the voter ID card. So there could be NDC people, there could be MPP people. They, it's not only NDC people who have the current voter ID card. The, the Electoral Commission, that's a, a poisoned fruit of a poison tree, and it's not good for us. If you eat, you will die. Literally. Exactly. And that is what the Supreme Court bought into. That's exactly what they bought into. What then becomes of the outcome of the elections conducted by those registers? Are we then saying that Akufado is a product of a poisonous fruit? So what will happen to him? Can somebody now go to court and say that because you've declared those ones as poisonous, those uh, registers as poisonous, he must also go? That would be a disaster. So you see, the rippling effects of such a decision. You see, in all, in all over the world, mm -hmm. in very serious democracies, if uh, registration is to be done, mm. as in our case, the election management board mm. of those countries will look for an ID card which is accessible to majority of the people in the country. Okay. And then the 5% who don't have it, the 10% who don't have it, will now resort to this voucher. Term. Is that not why you have the NIA card, which everybody is supposed to have, and the people can vouch? And then those of you who have passports can use yours? You know, and I know, mm -hmm. the challenges with the uh, National Identification Authority. They've gone back to do, I don't know whether you read social media, mm -hmm. and complaints coming from people from the uh, areas that they've gone. They've gone back to do mopping up. Right, for three days or so. And you know, for three days that they arrive in their destinations, in some places, nothing was happening. You didn't receive sentence. We did. And so you can see that the current National Identification Authority card mm. is an exercise which is ongoing, mm. which means that most people still don't have it. But they will get it by the time the Electoral Commission starts its work. No. By Tuesday? You are mm. not sure? No. Don't also forget that the NIA is capturing even people below 18 years. So it is not everybody, as I speak now, 62% mm. of those who are in the current voter register will be disenfranchised because of this rule. How did you come by that figure? Yeah, we did our, we did our tabulation of the number of registration that the NIA has done, mm. took away people who will be less than 18 and cannot register, mm and then looked at that and said then these are the people who can go and register. Right. And when you compare it to the register, mm. you see that it is short of this figure. Your, your flag bearer yesterday also said, and maybe a final one before I go to Richard, your flag bearer yesterday also said that 
uh, the NIA cards were being collected without any form of verification, and he thinks that that's, that's not too good, especially when we say all of this is to ensure that the system is sanitized. That is Why true. would he make such a claim? No, no, it's not that he's making a wild claim. When you go to pick your card, you would have been asked to put your hands on the machine, mm. and then the machine will identify that you are the one. Right. Now, the machines are just, the cars are just given out. Yeah? It has There's no verification mm. to know whether, yes or no, you are the one. That verification is absent. But it has your photo on it. I'm saying, no, no. Why? Why do you people like sh circumventing the procedure? If that is the procedure we have provided, mm. why is it that people are now not being taken through that? And you say we shouldn't comment on that. Why well, haven't you seen the cards which are printed and one person can have about four of them? Haven't you seen that? <laughs> haven't you seen that where an individual is giving four cards why? You say you want to, people, people, foreigners are on the register. Mm. And majority of people who will be registering or queuing to register are people who will be vouched for. I, I can go and bring 10 Togolese. I'm a Ghanaian. Then I vouch for them. Are you cleaning the register? Even in that regard, what happens if my... Uh, registration has been challenged mm -hmm. and my name has been expunged. Mm -hmm. What happens to the 10? Because you are the one who stood surety for exactly. them. Exactly. What happens to them? When they are not, it's not true, a fault of theirs. If, if my is challenged and they expunge my name, and in fact, during the, uh, there's what is called exhibition. Right. You can still challenge somebody during the exhibition. That's why it is, it is done. That's right. They will remove the name. Then what happens to the ten? Because it, they, they were basing their citizenship on me, on yours. Yes. What happens to the rest? Did you raise that in court? All this has been canvassed on all platforms. What happens to the ten? And so they are saying that they want to get a, a credible register, but it is rather their operations, activities that will bring in foreigners into the system. Okay, Richard. You, you obviously you are elated. Uh, I'm not. I'm about not about this. Um, no. I'm why are you not happy? This I'm is not. what you're There's nothing for. to be happy about. There's everything to work for. Okay. Because as a Ghanaian, our investment is to move toward a register that all of us are confident includes us mm -hmm. Ghanaians. And now, the disingenuousness of Malibu's discussion this morning. Mm -hmm is one of a person who is peeved, mm. who is not appreciative of the rule of law, yet he's a lawyer. Mm. The question he's asking about, mm. okay, where's well, a poisonous fruit, and mm. therefore what happens to Akufuado? Mm. He knows the answer to that. What is the answer? The answer to that is that you cannot. It doesn't create any difficulty mm -hmm. for him because in 2016, people in this country were canvassing for a new register mm -hmm. because they thought this one was problematic, and the court held that position. Except mm. there was a maneuvering, okay, was? by the enablement of his party mm. and the EC to hold uh, to hold on to this uh, register mm. by pretending they were removing NHIA card registrants from the register, which w they knew they couldn't. Was it the government or the electoral commission? I, I just said my, I just made my point. Okay, that, okay. That what it was the electoral commission. The Supreme Court yesterday says. But, the Electoral Commission is independent. Well, I, I, I agree, but he, they were supporting that position, so that's that's the point I'm making. Oh, but if you if you make, I'm that, saying if, that they supported make... the EC okay. not to compile a new register. Okay. So right. okay. yes, so mm. that that was their enablement but, but then, to make that happen. Sorry, but, but then, that is not a. But, that's but, a sorry, but then it was because the Electoral Commission had gone to the Supreme Court to assure them that they had expunged Johnny, the names of NHIS registrants. Johnny, so I have the Supreme, Court, the Supreme Court before. should be holding the Electoral Commission for contempt because they lied to the court. Well, they should. Ghanaians. Somebody, he can take it to court. But I'm just telling you that in this country, there were people invested in ensuring the right thing was done, even when they were in opposition in this country. Mm. Number two, this thing about... Uh, if I guarantee and I do this, what happens to mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. And I can bring 10 to go mm -hmm. That's it's irresponsible even to suggest. Mm. The thinking 
and the investment, the interest of you, myself, and Mr. Malaba, mm -hmm. is that as guardians, we must ensure the sanctity of that register. Right. Because it is only us who will be affected if that register is not the accurate representation of Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And by that, a government is elected, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be elected because we have the register filled with people who do not have a stake in this country, and therefore they vote anyhow mm. and bring a government that will affect our common interest. But if you make the so, requirements, so, make, make it possible for that to happen, it will happen. Like, what is the requirement? That, that I can go and vote for at least 10 people. That has been part of the register many, many years ago. Day one, when we compile the register. This is not the first time guaranteeing process is allowed mm. in our registration process. Mm. It is not the first. So really, where is this thing coming from? The question is, Johnny, mm -hmm. Are we committed to doing a register that is all Ghanaians and nothing else? Mm -hmm. That you will be confident anybody in that is a Ghanaian. Because you have that interest and I have that interest because we want to be the ones who decide the future of our country. Mm -hmm. Simple, everywhere, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now the question at stake is that how do we ensure that we are able to achieve a register mm -hmm. that is of Ghanaian uh, you know, origin mm -hmm. and nothing else that will create dispute amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. That is the quest we're on. Okay. So therefore, if you are NDC and you're invested in doing the right thing, mm -hmm. so therefore you engage in a conversation to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, the ruling notwithstanding, that's why I'm telling you I'm not happy about anything. It is a beginning of a process. The hard work is yet to be done. Mm -hmm. I invite a Malabanist party. Which is the hard work? The hard work is how do we ensure that we compile a register, in the end, using the qualifications or uh, the identification systems the NIA, uh, to ensure passport. that, in the end, we get every Ghanaian on the register, mm. we get other people who are not supposed to be on the register, not on the register, and in doing so, ensure that it's done safely, and so we go and vote in December. But President Mohammed thinks that the Electoral Commission, instead of being independent, is making itself a willing tool for a diabolical agenda to disenfranchise people. You know, that is an individual pointing a finger and about four extra pointing at him. Mm. It was under him, okay, that the EC failed to compile a register in 2016. You see, I don't want to go back and discuss this issue because mm. if former President John Dramani Mahama is being honest, to Ghanaians. Mm. He cannot say what he said yesterday. What should he have said? Because what the Supreme Court did yesterday mm -hmm. was upheld the ruling under him, a Supreme Court under him in 2016. Okay. Abu Essentially, that's what they did. Abu Ramadan. Absolutely. Okay. So, so okay. what is it saying that this, uh, the EC has made itself willing? Okay. Forever, under him, mm. the EC failed to do what was right, what was legal. So he is rather the one who is using the EC. Nobody's using the EC. The Supreme Court, mm. if it had came up, if it came up yesterday with a different thinking, mm. uh, other than what the Supreme Court before upheld mm. or ruled, then he has a, a basis to so say that. If I remember, he is the one mm. who sought mm. in 2016 to use the EC, and he used the EC, thought that it would benefit him. Okay. So, but I, this this mm, era, mm -hmm. the commitment as it has been in 2016, in 2012, in 2014, all along is to ensure that when all is said and done, mm -hmm. we have a register, win or not, it is a register you can say that that was a credible register of Ghanaians and they chose A over B. Okay. That is the, the so, crux so of the So yesterday, matter. if I remember, I, I reading through, the Supreme Court had made reference to Abu Ramadan number two. Yes. And that, in that ruling, they said that the right to vote is inalienable. Yes. And everybody must have that right. Yes. Now, how do you compare that with what Amaliba, for example, and the NDC are saying that not everybody has a passport. Yes. At this point, not everybody by Tuesday would have the NIA card. That's right. So by those processes, you have already started on a path to disenfranchise people, even though you agree by that Abu Ramadan ruling that everybody has the right to vote so long as they are qualified and, and they are in their right frame of mind to vote. Yes. How do you measure the two? But Johnny, what is the qualification? That's what is at stake. Mm. Every human being can vote in this country, but there are foreigners in this country, okay? Every human being can vote in the world, but then when you're voting a particular part of the world, they want citizens. Right. So that's the qualification. And the qualification by law, mm. in which in this case, the CI-126, says mm. that uh, people who can identify mm. by this documentation 
the passport, the NIA card, all by guaranteeing, mm. but two individuals who have been vetted and are on the register can ascertain that, yes, indeed, you are Ghanaian. Mm. That's the qualification. So until you pass through that, uh, mm. we don't have a qualification system. So the law has specified a qualification. Mm. So let's go through that. And that's what I'm saying, that the hard work is yet to be done. So if you have now, no, let's no figure passport, out. no NIA card, and you don't get anybody to vouch for you. Then maybe you are, you're not a Ghanaian because if you just come out, out of it. Because you go to your hometown right now. Mm -hmm. I go to my hometown. Okay, and I go register my police station with my government. Mm -hmm. Okay, I go there. People know me. It's as simple but, but as you, that. But you don't live in your hometown. But, it, but that's where I that's where I grew up. That's that's where I come from. So you must go to I your hometown family. to register and then to vote in your hometown by hook. So if you, if you work, so if you work you saying, at Damongo and you come from uh, I got him a petto. You have to come home to come and register. Is that what you're saying? Johnny, do you want to vote? Do you take your right to vote seriously? Do you know what it takes for people to get citizenships of other countries? It is, it is a sacred right that I am a citizen. Your mm. country has responsibility to you. Mm. So it is not a thing that we can just throw out like uh, potatoes, just give it to people. No, it's a right that is sacred and it's inherent. Mm. So when you have that right, you protect it. That's why... You have a Ghanaian who says, I want to join the military. Mm. All I want to do is to defend this country. And all of us who are not military people, we owe them. Mm. Okay? They have sacrificed and they want to sacrifice their life to defend this but, country. But if you're a Ghanaian, it is a right mm. that is inherent in your being. But if you're a Ghanaian, so it is Richard, important and it's sacred. Richard, you, you, Richard, I don't know Richard, how to Richard, explain for you to I, understand. I, well, I get you. But if you're a Ghanaian, in yeah. Ghana, it doesn't matter where you have come from or yeah. where you come from. Mm -hmm. You are you are Ghanaian everywhere on this land, so long as you remain so. Absolutely. So that if in, I come from Joje, yes. in the Volta region, yes. and I work in Golu, yeah. and it will take me two days yeah. to travel to and back yeah. to Golu, you are suggesting to me that, in spite of the fact that I'm a Ghanaian anywhere, I can't have the luxury of registering in in Joje, uh, in, in Golu, if I don't have a passport and a card. But I need to come all the way to Georgia to get somebody to vouch for me. Is that what you're saying? What, what, do you, what would you advise, Johnny? No, I'm asking you. You are I the mean, one. Me, the question you, the one you have the answer. It is sacred and yeah, all you, of that. You have the answer. Because the thing about it is that, so are you suggesting that you think that is a burden, so therefore just allow everybody to register? That is the other side of your question. Mm. You say, is that what we want? Just let everybody register. Then in that case, we don't even need a register. Just open the police station, let everybody come and vote. <laughs> you understand? That is not how you build a country. Mm. We have to agree that what we are doing is serious. And I've always understood this in the context that mm. what we are doing, just like our forefathers did in this country, under great danger to their lives, mm. they chose to fight for independence. Mm. So if we have inherited that today and we want to build forward, mm -hmm. we must come to understand that what we have must be safeguarded. Mm. And in safeguarding it, we have to make certain sacrifices. We have to take certain steps, which include ensuring mm. that our electoral system is sacred, it is uh, inarguable. Okay. So in the end, all of us have confidence in the document mm. that elect or unelect the presidents of our country. In doing so, build this democracy mm -hmm. and bequeath it to our children. So they inherit a better country than we did. Okay. I grew up partly under the... Uh, uh, the PNDC era, mm -hmm. it wasn't fun to be there, okay? So what we have now, where uh, uh, Amaliba mm -hmm. knows the fact, but then goes to court to have the laws tested, and the court takes time to rule on the law, he has an understanding. Mm -hmm. I have an understanding that now we need to move forward. The invitation to him is that his party, and not my party, mm -hmm. obviously, going to engage in a conversation to see how is it that we are going to what, work what you to call ensure, the hard work. Yes. Okay. To ensure that the process as we have before us, mm -hmm. it is done in a way that gives everybody okay. we'll the come, opportunity we'll, we'll come, to get we'll come on the to, register. We'll come to the how, but there's a quote from uh, ex-president Mohammed it says, I call on all Ghanaians who yearn to see a change in the governance of this country to rise up and be counted for where there is a will, there is a way. No politically engineered register can save this failed government from the inevitable defeat that awaits them in the next 65, 165 days. With or without a new voters register, the NDC shall win this election by the grace of God. Do you side with him? This politics. Very political. That you are, that you and are and failed. It's beneath, that it's is be, no, politically see, engineered. It's, it's, it's beneath the former president. 
He's looking desperate. Look, the same thing you just said is akin what he did yesterday. Mm. Uh, if you put it side by side with what Nanado did following the Supreme Court ruling, you realize that is cheap. How? You, you must rise to the occasion. Mm. You must rise to the occasion because what is there? Now you have a process before you. You can engage to make sure people register because then it tells me if you are a leader, you find solution. Mm. So he's telling me that a process that is yet to unfold, he cannot mm, mm. lead his party to figure out a way to identify and help mm. Ghanaians to register. But then there was a, uh, there was a, uh, a leader in this country mm. who in the midst of all the facts and the confusions that occasioned the 2012 election, mm. understanding that the country and the issues are bigger than himself and his ambition, mm -hmm. said that even though I disagree, mm, mm. I see it in the interest of this country. That's the kind of leadership we are looking for. President John Draman Mahama yesterday field, I watched it. Mm. And I was taken by surprise. Like, I thought that he would use this occasion, mm -hmm. just like Nanado used it in 2012, to rise to a point where Ghanaians saw that, indeed, we have leaders in this country. He mm. failed. I am saying, you have an opportunity, NDC and former President John Draman Mahama mm. in this country. There's a registration before you. It's a virgin process. Mm. All of us are going to engage in it. MPP doesn't have a register of our mm. own now. Mm. We are going to have the first name on it, myself. Mm. All of us are going to do it. So the process is before you. Okay. So what are you considering defeat even F before F the finally, thing starts? I see Amalba wants to come in. But finally, I've heard some somewhat of the NDC make this argument that, look, they go to court with two reliefs, main reliefs. The Supreme Court asked the Electoral Commission to explain why they will not admit the existing voter ID cards. They write a litany of reasons. They come to court and write on his feet, counsel for NDC, Juji Tamaklo, is asked to make a determination which of the reliefs he'll want to throw away. And he says, I want to go and consult my clients whose instructions have brought me here. Mm. And that was denied. He was asked to choose on his feet. Mm. Fast forward, while the matter was yet to be determined, the Electoral Commission, who was in court over this same matter, had already set a date to begin the registration. Mm -hmm. And then now... The reason for the ruling, we're told, will be ready by 15th of July. Mm -hmm. Do you see what the NDC sees, what they call unfair right from the start, that this was all orchestrated to make sure that what the Electoral Commission wants, and maybe what the MPP wants, is what is done? Do you see mm -hmm. that? No, the MPP doesn't run the court. And I'm telling you that everything the court upheld yesterday mm. has already been upheld under former john drama former president john drama so okay. there was nothing new done yesterday okay. that anybody should be surprised about okay and in fact that issue of pick one and eliminate the mm. other it was obvious and edwg is a very smart lawyer mm. okay my good brother is a smart lawyer he understood the constitutional position of the ec to compile a register okay. is one that they cannot dispute okay the Thank only you. thing was that they were doing politics with mm. it and realized when push came to shove mm. he knew what would stand and what would not stand okay so it was not a question that he needed to consult mm. he understands and he did the right thing Thank you. because he knows the supreme court will never rule against the constitution mm. which is very clear in plain language thank you um, Alba, let's start from this question that I asked uh, him. Did, did you see foul play in there? An unfair uh, chronology? In fact, in fact, um, it is untrue that what the Supreme Court upheld yesterday mm. was also up upheld under the NDC administration. The Supreme Court did not say under the NDC administration that mm. we cannot use our current voter ID card. It did say that. So let, I, us, let, I, I, us, be Richard, him. let us be clear. Mm. Now, my good friend here has described some of my comments as irresponsible. So I'm going to give it back to him in the same <laughs> manner so that you don't ask me to stop. It is an imbecilic talk <laughs> to say that. To say that. Two, two wrongs don't make a right. No, no. I don't I'll forgive. Allow, allow I don't forgive under this program. <laughs> on this program. <laughs> It is imbecilic talk <laughs> for somebody to say that guarantee has already uh, is always done. Mm. <laughs> what we are saying is that the level of guaranteeing this time mm -hmm. will be so high, said that it will be abused, and said that it will be it will frustrate voters, and said that it will turn away voters. Mm. Do you know that the Kodio, mm. which is an independent body, right. has, indicate, election yes, has indicated that this guaranteeing 
the nature that it will take this time because of the huge numbers, there will be Goro boys. There will be Goro boys. People will make a living out of it. Career guarantors. Career guarantors will come and ask people to pay before they guarantee. Do they know that? Mm. Now, the irony of the EC, the EC says that they won't take birth certificates, isn't it? Right. But do you know that when you are going to delete somebody's name because he's dead, mm. you are allowed to use death certificate? Right, that's true. You see the irony? And the, it comes the, from the, the same office. The same office, the office that you said that the birth certificate mm. is not credible. That same office has produced a death certificate. As for death certificate, you agree. But the living person who is holding his birth certificate and working with his living certificate, mm. that one you won't agree. <laughs> but the one who is dead, I can bring it and show it, and then you agree. You see the, the mindset of them, of the uh, EC. You ask the question. I'm coming back there. Okay. People kept asking me, why is it that the matter is in court and the EC is going ahead and announcing it? They are independent. Do they know something that we don't know that will happen in the court? Mm. Did they know that this ruling was going to be in this way? Because <laughs> under Afarijan, mm. I remember under Afarijan, the uh, EC had completed all arrangements mm. to conduct this assembly election. You remember the Fisherman's case? Yeah. They had completed everything. Mm. Then Afenio Marco led the Fisherman to court, the Supreme Court. Mm. And the Supreme Court halted the process. Afarijan didn't say that I will still go on. He had to wait. The court made a decision. Mm. And then the whole process was halted. So for the EC to have gone ahead, knowing that there's a matter in court, mm. which matter could have changed the advert. Mm. Because if the Supreme Court had said that, include uh, voter ID card, it meant that the advert will all change. All right. Whose money were they going to use to go and do the change? Did you expect the Supreme Court to stop the Electoral Commission or to advise them not to go ahead with, by advertising the date that they true? Look, let me tell you something. Tell me. My father is 80 years old. Bless him. He has told me that after the judges, I should leave them. There's a bigger judge who will judge all of us. So me, I'm not going to talk about them. Don't talk about them. <laughs> now, Richard is inviting you to, to join them to do what oh, yes. the, ha the hard oh, work. Oh, yes. That the one, I agree. Work. That one, I agree. And our plug better indicated that. That people should go out. And mm. I'm going to add. All those who voter ID card mm. who have been denied the opportunity mm. to use the card to go and uh, as a breeder document mm. should all go out in anger mm. <laughs> in anger and vote out the administration because it is the administration mm. which rerolled this process for it to become what it is today, said that they cannot use their voter ID card. They should go out in <laughs> anger and vote against them. Indeed, we were fighting for all Ghanaians who have that to be able to register. But now that we have fought for them and they have seen that we fought for them, but the result is not coming, they should now go out there in anger and vote out the administration. But they should keep the cards. Because the Supreme for, Court... For, for what? Wait, wait, wait. The Supreme Court has said that... Mm. It is the ruling. Okay. They have said that... Wh which relief are you reading? No, no. Okay. Uh, when they dismissed Relief 6, they went okay. further to quote Abu Ramadan. Right. And this is the quotation. Number 2. Abu Ramadan 2. Yes. And this is what they said. <laughs> if the law provides for alternative ways mm -hmm. of performing the task, the discretion is vested in the actor in deciding within the limits imposed by Article 296, 296 yeah. of the Constitution as to which one of them would best suit the tax okay. on hand. So you are serving notice that if NDC comes back to power, they should keep the, the cards. Card. They should keep the cards. Are Once you, the EC you, uh, has a discretion to indicate which card, in fact, from this ruling, they are saying that they can, they can even say they want to use Senate cards. Right. So they should keep them. When NDC comes back to power, they will use those cards to be able to vote. I thought the EC was independent. <laughs> no. <laughs> the EC. It's not independent under this administration. <laughs> and that, that is, for me, mm. 
a president mm. that has been set, okay. and we are not going to go back on it. Okay, Richard, why are you laughing? I'm just laughing because it's irresponsible what my brother is saying. It's imbecilic. Okay, okay. If you on describe your yourself okay. like okay. that, that's okay. okay. It's but imbecilic it, on okay. your part. Okay. You see, the truth of the matter you, you is that Allah, Allah, Allah. Truth, the truth of the matter is mm. this: that this thing needn't be an emotional thing, unless you are not being objective. Okay. If you are being objective and consistent, and your interest is the interest of this country. Everything my brother is saying, this is an indefensible case. Thank you. You agree that we here. do a process, mm -hmm. and the process must be carried out. Thank you. That's an obvious here. He says that he will take, they will take your uh, proposal to do hard work. In That's fact, good. John Muhammad indicated that they will go out and register, but in registering, they are doing so with anger so they can vote you out. That's fine. Well, that's an obvious. Let's right. hear you. Good morning, Johnny. I have decided not to vote in the upcoming elections, but because of the court ruling, I've rescinded my earlier stand to now vote out this MPP government. Alhaji Hamsan uh, writes from Pick Farm. Johnny, stop making fun of us. We have every right to disagree with the verdict of the Supreme Court, and that was oh, exactly what fun. President Muhammad did yesterday. Truth be told, the freedom and justice that our grandfathers fought for today has been thrown to the dogs. Ghana today is back to the periods of the dark days in Ghana. In my humble opinion, Ghana today needs serious prayers. Johnny, don't forget we, we are all in it. I'm sad this morning and my heart bleeds for this country called Ghana. God have mercy. Good morning, Johnny. Please, I want to know if the EC is not accepting birth certificates. How does the EC know that an individual is 18 years old and eligible to register to vote. Umar Farouk sent that from Tamale. A credible register is necessary, but we never take time to do things. That is why we always have these problems. Surely we will not have a credible register the way we are going about this one. Previous ones were done the same way. Kipu sent that from Savannah region. Good morning, Johnny. NDC must be happy that Supreme Court has said the EC can replace a register anytime they want. So what, uh, what is our worry about? Uh, because MPP cannot be in power all the time. From Shiftman Aton Sukumase, I'm happy that the uh, Supreme Court has thrown away the NDC suit against the EC. I bet, uh, I bet Ghanaians to go out on 30th to register and vote for President Ekufado. Hashtag four more for Nana. Hashtag BBABF fine. Good morning, TV3. I'm short of words this morning because the verdict uh, yesterday, uh, about the verdict yesterday, but come what may, Ghanaians have seen the clear difference between the four years of JM and the current president. The decision outside court using the thumb to vote is more powerful. JM is coming back from Victor Rapture in Ho. My heart bleeds when I hear the NDC complain mm. that a chunk of people in the rural community do not have the Ghana card. I would like to tell them that they have nobody to blame than the former president, John Dramani Mahama, for if he had continued from where President Mills of blessed memory, everybody in this country should have a Ghana card by now. Charles Nyame writes from Asamankesi, President Ekufado's surprise packing of the courts uh, was uh, justified yesterday by the ruling, which sort of uh, sought to create confusion in the minds of Ghanaians. But let the MPP know that if they have the EC and the courts on their side, the NDC and John Mahama have the people and God on their side in the upcoming elections. Good morning to Honorable Michael Eduse, next MP for Lower West Akim constituency. Hello, Johnny. Ask Mr. President whether he will close down beds and debts departments in Ghana. If the apex court declares bed certificates as invalid uh, documents in determination of a citizen in Ghana, Ghana is bleeding profusely under rule of law by citizen Francis. I don't know why we as Ghanaians don't do things with common sense. I believe if something must be done, it must be done well. Uh, I know we would come back to this voters register issue again in the future. This issue about guarantees, confirming somebody to be a Ghanaian is fake because that is not what makes somebody a Ghanaian. I was thinking the Supreme Court would rule that the EC should take their time, wait for the NIA to give their card to all those who are qualified for it before the EC goes ahead to compile the register. This compilation of a new register must be given enough time for everybody to use the NIA card, which everybody might have acquired by next year. This not necessary in this time of uh, a viral pandemic. Well, the best law is common sense, which some of us black Africans are still lacking from Ooh. Dr. Nutako in Keta. I'll take the very last two. The EC should include the old voters ID card, even though they have won the case by Osman 
from Damon. Okay. The very last one, uh, Musa Nima. It says, uh, how can a card that is not accepted for transactions by any institution, including the court, be considered more valuable than the one that is accepted? Grateful. Thank you. Travesty of justice, Musa Nima. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Council, so by this ruling, that, does it mean, is a card applicable, uh, the voter ID card applicable, uh, if I walk into a bank to want to use it? Uh, to withdraw money, can I still go ahead and use it? It's a concern that people are asking. Yeah, it's a concern people are asking, but um, I think this ruling is not directed at other institutions. Okay. It is limited to the EC. Okay. So um, I know that um, currently the banks rely on our voter ID card. Right. And so people... And they use the ECS database. They, use the, right. they have a database. So normally when you go, they pick your card, go back okay. to the counter, mm. and what they do is to check the, the whether the card... Is yes, authentic. exactly. So it will still be the main document for transaction, business transactions. Because the, Even though it's been outlawed by the new CI? No. Six. The new CI, like I indicated, is limited to registration purposes. Okay. But you also know, somebody has just, uh, a text has just sent it that mm. this Ghana card can, it's not been accepted by uh, banks and institutions. Right. Because it is still in the fledgling, fledgling stage. It has not yet had its full acceptance. And so this ruling is only directed at the EC. Okay. But the banks will still continue Thank to you. use it. Thank mm. you. I just got a text. Somebody says they are not happy about the presence of the military and the police and immigration in Ketu South. Why are you worried if there's nothing to hide? They are doing their legitimate business in Ketu South. I don't think that uh, we have a military men stationed at uh, our border areas. What we have is um, immigration officers. Right. And so when you see strange people who are not supposed to be there and they are there, it causes uh, concern. Um, you would have expected that if I'm coming here, mm -hmm. I will meet a policeman because they are for uh, uh, right. no, internal security. security. But if you then have a soldier man here, mm -hmm. it raises questions. Now, what we know for our borders is immigration. Now, when you begin to add army, then it raises concern. People will begin, are we in a war state? Because the army is supposed to be for external aggression, mm -hmm. to protect our territorial boundary from external aggression. So the questions will be asked, is there going to be, is there a war? Mm -hmm. Is somebody preparing to attack Ghana? That's when you can now send the soldiers. So there are legitimate questions. Okay. People think that this is a way to scare voters, mm. potential registrants, who, and you know, the MPP has always made the voter region a target. You recently heard uh, his boss, Gabi Ochodako, wondering why Ketu South should have the highest, one of the highest voter registra uh, registration numbers. And so the people there yesterday held a press conference, they held a press conference and indicated that that was a way to intimidate them and not to allow them go out to register. Okay. And so it is one of the issues that the party will address. Mm. Richard, yeah. you, you come from the voter yeah. region. What, what do you know? You are, you are attached to government as well. What do you know? Oh, no, I'm not uh, part of government. But the point of it is that it's... Uh, you are here on the ticket of the MPP. Right? No, 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 no. I'm here from <laughs> Danko Institute. Uh, Johnny, uh, that issue is clear. And uh, okay. he, he says they are going to address it. They, his party already addressed it yesterday mm. uh, in a very animated way that I thought was over the board. Okay. Uh, but uh, the, the truth of the matter is that, and having gone myself mm, to, uh, that, to that place, yeah, to that place mm. and then access the points, okay. we talked about COVID-19 and the rise of the numbers. Right. Uh, people are entering in and out. Okay. Even though country. the borders are closed? Even though they are closed. There are a lot of unapproved routes that people are using from Aflau all the way up. Okay. Okay. But it's more pronounced in Aflau because you know, the uniqueness of Aflau is that it is just next to another country's mm. capital mm. city. Mm. So transactions in and out there is very prominent. Okay. So people coming from Benin, Nigeria, all across, trying to come to Ghana, that's the, the and main... And the immigration and customs uh, guys cannot do this? They, they are doing their best, but it's not enough. Okay. And okay. people are entering in and out. If you want, up until when the military was brought in, if, if you came with me to Aflau, I can take it. If you actually have pictures after the show, I'll show you. You understand? Mm. There are instances where there's a farm that cuts across. Mm. Somebody comes from Togo to their farm pretending they're working and they're entering Ghana. And so you need 
with the present time where our uh, uh, infection rate is going okay. so high, okay. we need to do something drastic in protecting Ghanaians to ensure that at least... But you, but you said people should go to their hometowns to go and register. Yeah. Because it's sacred. Yeah. Yes. People are coming to their hometowns. What's the problem? Which is, which is their hometown? Uh, the farm and the Togo and coming back to register. What okay. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that's a that, totally that's a different, different thing. thing. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, so the, what I was saying so is that if I live in Accra hmm. and I have to go to Ketu South to go and register, okay. which I will do, hmm. uh, I can go. The okay. military. But if I have my farm in Togo, oh, oh. I can't come back and register. No, okay. no, the farmer Thank is you. a Togolese. So Thank you. Oh, the farmer is yes, a Togolese. Yes, 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 he's a Togo, his farm is farm. But Don't the point is that have their farms across. Oh, Thank you. hold on, hold on, uh, Johnny, hey. Johnny. See, this, see, what I'm saying is that the farmer is a Togolese. What I'm saying is that when the your own brother saying that you are Togolese, your own brother saying you are Togolese. You are disrupting him, cousin. Johnny, what the point of the matter is that if the borders are shut, they are shut, and they are shut for a reason because we're having to struggle with COVID-19. Okay. Let's all understand, it's not normal times. It is nothing against mm. uh, water region. It is to protect all of when, us in this When country. are the Ghanaians stuck in Togo going to be back home? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if anybody uh, there's no saying... There's no arrangement for... I don't know if, uh, if there are any Ghanaians stuck in Togo that what? want to okay. come. But the right. ones I know, mm. the students who are in Benin and even Togo studying mm. French, I think I understand some of them are okay. here. Thank you. Uh, Richard Ahaba is program. the executive director of the Dankwa Institute. Grateful for your time, Richard, and I enjoy your Friday. Also, to lawyer Abraham Amalba, he is the head of the NDC's legal team as part of the communication team as well. Thank you very much. Richard and Sissi is not here on the ticket of the NPP, but we do know that we invite NDC and MPP, so uh, we, will, we, will, we will get into a good